doing, Tim Riggins? I'm fixing my truck. I'm your new next door neighbor. Okay. And you are Tim Riggins, number 33, who single-handedly led the Panthers to the semis. What happened to your eye? Stop, please. What? I'm gonna need you to shut up. Because I'm incredibly hungover right now. I was 20 and then having a decent year, but there was a lot of schools that were excited or whatnot. And then basically what happened in a nutshell, wrecked this guy, my MCL, and then recouped it with the BC Lions, their whole okay. training staff. And then my first game back, it was just a freak accident again. Uh, when the play had died and you're going back to the bench and somebody just falls on your knee. And it was, that was it, same knee. And then I asked my best friend to take me off the ice because that was kind of it. And that was like, it's art or life imitating art with like F and L. It was that level of just despair really at that time because there wasn't a contingency. There wasn't like a backup plan. This was what I was gonna do. But then that was it really. The second time, yeah, I was in the dressing room, wouldn't take my, it was so Friday Night Lights. I wouldn't take my gear off just because I knew it was the last time. Yeah, I was gutted, gutted. Uh -huh. I would write these, no one knows this, but I would write these letters. All these schools, you would you know, you're after a game, you're getting interviewed by Div 1, Div 3 schools or whatnot. Here's a funny one, actually. We were in uh, exhibition games and, uh, they don't know your SAT scores yet. And so I'm going down the tunnel and this Harvard scout pulls me over. And he's just like, hey man, great game, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, don't even waste your time. Like, <laughs> I'm not even like, I can't even cheat to get into your school. <laughs> so we like literally had a great laugh and he's like, gives you the tap. And he's like, well, best of luck. You're a good player. That's what I said to so him. Funny. But then I would write like after it was all over, I didn't really have a plan. And in the summer, I would write these letters to like the Div 3 schools being like, hey, it's me. Uh, I know I threw my knee out, but it's good now. Do you guys have a room or can I come at least at this point, I'm asking to be, you know, a walk-on with no scholarship or earn it or nothing. You ever just feel completely useless? Couldn't have been more raw. And I think that's why a lot of people gravitate towards Riggins, you know, and the show. Like, we all were, except for Kyle and, and Connie, you know? Right. So the you were rewarded style. for the mistakes right. on this one. It was just a whole, it was kind of like a master's class for three years. Okay. Uh, if it's a point or something, I want to play a scene a certain way. I'm always open to it, but I do feel like I've done my work and I've arced it out. Uh, but you're dealing with a guy that came off Friday Night Lights and no marks, no rehearsal, nothing. But yeah, you go on to, you know, you're in Australia and you're doing this crazy big movie. Like, on Wolverine. Yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden it's just like, no, on this line, you need to be over here and your hand needs to be over here. And I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, no, you're crazy. I'm not doing that. And they're like, no, you need to do that. That's the shot. People you've never met are coming up to you and being like, um, you can't, you, you can't really do that. You gotta just do it like normally and just kinda, yeah. and I'm like, hey, I'm Taylor. But it was just like, that was the moment where I was like, man, you know, I literally sent an email out saying, I think I'm gonna get fired because I kind of, I had no confidence? ground to stand on either. I'm like this guy on a show that no one's even playing the ninth lead on, you know, this crazy big movie. So you're expendable. No, the process wasn't, that's for sure. Yeah, is that, you know? did it feel like Friday Night Lights was this little oasis and then you're back it was. to? It, w it really was. Yeah. Like even with the rest of my career, it's just like, it's it's something that, you know, it was just a process that just will never be emulated and you remember it for that. Here's to God and football and 10 years from now, Street. Good friends living large in Texas. Sent a tape in the Texas Forever speech to Pete. I went and found some Texas beers, Lone Star beers. Yeah. And had a sleeveless on and did the whole chug the beer, did the Texas Forever speech. And then getting the visa, he loved it. And then uh, went and there's one guy left for Riggins. And it was at Universal in the offices there. Finally get in there, Pete comes in the, oh no, I'm sitting in the round, this huge round table, couple uh, Landry's, 
a couple Saracens, I think, and then one Riggins. And I'm sitting across from the other guy, and he's like, who you, who you uh, in for? I'm like, oh, Tim Riggins. And he's like, all right. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and then uh, Pete came in. I had, everyone had their moment of improv with him, like 30 minutes. Actually, that's where I think like my strongest suit was because I, I love it. You know, I think you have to prepare a bit more to be grounded and be able to improv in character too. So um, I could fly with that, especially Riggins. I mean, if I can't, if I have nothing going on in the brain, I could just shut down and it would be Riggins. And the ball is given to Riggins and he picks up a quick 10 yards. Riggins again up the middle and he almost his way in and it's a touchdown. I definitely took my time. You did? Yeah, yeah, especially I think he just, with the lack of father and that, he just shuts down and he kept bringing that up. So um, finally getting a reaction, which, you know, smartly he wanted out of me just to see if you could, I could go there. Go there with an yeah. explosive reaction. Yeah, something yeah, just right. big. Um, and then we were walking down the hallway to the screen test, which is all the execs, it's all the ties. And he's like, just do what you did in the room with me one-on-one, -on -one, and then we'll, we'll work on the Canadian accent, but just keep doing what you're doing. I get in the room and he's like, I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna play Jason Street in the scene. And then again, he, uh, it's, this, it's the Texas Forever scene, I think one more. And he went off book and started like interrupting me while I was doing the speech. And I just ripped him in half and told him to shut up and stop interrupting me so I can get this out and he loved it. Then I went back and then literally as I'm opening the door to the hotel room, the phone's ringing. It's like, you got it. Everybody in this room knows who, where we get our heart from. He's sitting right there. During this process, it would be like, hey, we're gonna change networks. We're on a different time, different day, right. uh, but we're probably canceled anyway. So don't stress about any of this. Yeah. That don't... was like almost daily. I'm sure Chan said the same stuff, you yeah. know? But Pete really kind of just leveled the process and no marks, no rehearsals. You know, it's just improv when you feel it's right and, and, and fight for your character, fight for that integrity. And if you don't believe it's truth, then don't do it, you know? And that was like that freedom. And that's, that was super empowering. Yeah, it was it was a amazing and Chandler, you gotta tip the hat to them too, of him and Cons just because they did they they really knew how to prepare and they would fight for what was right. And I remember Chan saying at the beginning that he didn't want to be that make it a soapy relationship. I think the best leaders in any world are the ones that lead by their action and their work ethic, and he was that guy. Right. Beyond prepared, never took it for granted, but also had just a great time and could joke, and, and uh, I learned or kind of sponged up as much as that as I could, you know? And I love throwing him curveballs as, you know, Riggins could say anything. He really could, and that was the beauty of him, you know? And I think it was more just being so raw and not giving a shit, like not knowing what a critic was, not really like caring, like genuinely, I didn't even know there was gonna be people writing about your performance. It was just like, I'm gonna go in swing and this is how I wanna do it. <laughs>